Good, good night, good evening, everyone. Hello, Philip. Uh, uh, it's a great pleasure to have you at my channel here tonight uh, to talk about uh, Noah's Ark. Uh, uh, good to be with you, Antangela. Yes, thank you. Thank you, everyone that uh, is watching uh, tonight. And uh, we will talk about uh, the discovery on Mount Ararat. And um, I will uh, introduct, uh, give a small introduction how I met uh, Philip. It was on Facebook about three or four months months ago. And a friend of mine, he was uh, posting about uh, his interaction with Philip. And um, I saw that it was about Noah's Ark. And it, I was remembered of an episode in 2010 when it was uh, announced that they supposedly did uh, find the ark and I uh, investigated that back then and um, they were claiming that this was a hoax, that this wasn't true, it was uh, something that was uh, made up by local people there just to, to uh, make money with, with this Chinese, Chinese team and so I did dismiss that story as well. I didn't believe it. And then I discovered that Philip did actually visit the site in 2014. And I didn't uh, before talk to someone which was an eyewitness at Mount Ararat, which was actually there. So I started to, to ask uh, a lot of questions to Philip. And he introduced me to the video on YouTube, which eventually tonight we can uh, screen here so everyone can have a look and um, it immediately uh, 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 got my curiosity and I wanted to know more and Philip was open to, to explain all what uh, he had seen there and so on and so we have Philip here and uh, he can tell us about his story, how he went there, how he, won he got involved in that uh, whole thing. So I want to, to give you the word, Philip, and ask you the first question, how uh, how did you got involved in that whole thing? Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Antangela. Uh, by the way, I'm, uh, there's some feedback coming in. I don't know. Uh, is it possible you have a speaker on somewhere that you I can will, turn off? I will. I will. Maybe it is my air condition, so it's no, it's a, it's feedback as a speaker that's going into your. No, no, no. I have no speakers no. on, so yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Let me make. Uh, don't know. Um, let me see if I see a speaker here. Uh, uh, nope. Uh, okay. No, I don't know where that's coming from, but. Um, any, um, just to let you know, I, I'm uh, the the um, people that's never met me before. Uh, I've um, I'm not an arc searcher, and uh, my my interest was finding archaeological evidence of Noah's flood, which is something that uh, I don't know anybody that works on that. But uh, in 2010, I published this book um, on the archaeological evidence actually tracing a dispersion of mankind from uh, every uh, uh, from, from, from every continent and then uh, I actually discovered that the, there was a middle bronze dispersion coming from this mountain in the Middle East which is Mount Ararat and of course I knew that that was also connect the, uh, the Bible also mentions Mount Ararat but I didn't think the ark could possibly exist, and um, I, I um, met many ark searchers in the process of the, doing this book, and uh, I, I found out they they uh, the, they weren't very archaeologically sophisticated, and they really didn't want you to ask them a lot of questions. Uh, the first thing that I heard that interested me about that was when I heard. Um, Ahmed Erdogrul, uh, who is our friend who's named Parachute, and he was speaking about 2006 on European television, 
and I knew immediately that that he was he had something that made archaeological sense, but I knew nothing about. I mean, I didn't know how to get a hold of him, and I I heard nothing until I heard this announcement in 2010 by this Noah's Ark Ministries, and um, that 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 was pretty excited because I just completed this book. And then there's an announcement about this great discovery. And, uh, <clears throat> but almost immediately after the announcement, there was um, um, a report that this was a hoax. It really, it was not, you know, no. uh, a real sight. And uh, th that really disappointed me, but I was so impressed with the announcement. And then I found out the arc, the, the where the claim had coming from, and it was the source that I already knew and I didn't think could make these judgments. And uh, so I ended up becoming uh, the defender of this discovery and um, uh, uh, got acquainted with the um, with the Hong Kong ministry, NAMI, and while they were uh, partnering with Parachute. But they were a media company. They were not archaeologists and uh, good people, but they couldn't handle the um, the scientific part. So uh, eventually, I parachute and I met in 2012, and then we we started working together. Uh, me to bring in archaeologists and the people that I've got excited about this is not the general public. Or the creationists, <laughs> but the archaeologists, and the mainstream archaeologists. Uh, I, I mean, that work in the in the field. In fact, at the highest levels, and uh, I mean, they they were impressed with the announcement from the beginning. But you know, they they are very suspicious of of, of um, sensational announcements, sensational claims. But they they could see that there was something authentic about this discovery, and it was and they knew immediately it, it was impossible to fabricate. You know, some of the archaeologists, you know, they they said, how, how can anyone of intelligence imagine that this could be fabricated? Of course, they were archaeologists and they understood uh, th this type of thing. So. Uh, we have finally uh, really got a world-class team of archaeologists involved in this. Of course, the Turkish ar archaeologists um, are leading this, Dr. Octay Belli, who, and they're familiar with the traditions, and most archaeology, archaeological discoveries are made from listening to the local people. Now, if you, archaeologists listen to the locals, uh, arc searchers, are impressed with their technology. And, and I mean, that's what I'm now. I'm an engineer and I've worked with technology all my life. When I start seeing the technology the arc searchers are using, uh, I immediately lose interest. That's why I was not interested in any of these claims because uh, I knew how, how you read these things. And, uh, uh, but, you know, uh, I listen to the locals. The archaeologists listen to the locals. And that's why uh, I'm involved with this project is because of the people that live on the mountain. And they um, uh, they, they know where things are. And and uh, also, it's, it's their heritage. And if we had somebody coming into America and was trying to run things and take over, we wouldn't like it. And they're, they're no different. It's, it was, it's probably the same in uh, Brazil and South America. I tell you, you know, if you, you, you need to be in partners with the local people. And that's the, the, the difference uh, of that in archaeology, but they work together. So uh, I, I actually, um, in um, 2014, uh, the discoverer, whose name is um, uh, Ahmed Erdogan, is, is, is his name, but he's better known by his nickname, Parachute. And uh, he said, Philip, we've got to get you on the mountain to wake everyone up. And so 
uh, I, I, I went and also an archaeological, I took an archaeological official with me. And um, first time I was ever on any high mountain like that, well, I was on Pike's Peak one time in an automobile. But my first climb, and you can see uh, what, what I saw, uh, I, I think, uh, I'm telling you, like, you want to show that video of my climb? And, uh, I just wanted to show quickly yeah. uh, parachute so anyone, everyone knows who he, who he is. Uh, so here he is. He, he's here on the left side. He is having an interview with one of the Navy team. So he's, he is uh, from the region. Yeah. He's talking with Panda Lee there. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pendley was the first outsider to visit this. Okay. Um, yeah, go ahead. You, you lost uh, <laughs> your track. Okay. So, um, when did you visit the first time um, the region? And when did you meet uh, these people there, Philip? My first time to visit, uh, my first meeting of Parachute was in 2012, January 2012. I actually went by myself, not with Parachute, um, to, uh, to the mountain area and visited the mountain. It was snowing and, um, and also visited with uh, some of the climbers who... Um, were supposedly <laughs> involved in the hoax, but, uh, uh, and, 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 you know, but they, you know, so it's all like a family to me. It, they're, you know, we've all become family after many years. That was in 2012. And, uh, and Parachute had already heard of me. Of course, I'd heard of him and for several years. And then we just, since that time, we've just grown closer both personally and and in and getting this project done so uh that then in 2014 uh was in fall of 2014 when he uh decided he, he that everybody decided that i needed to get on the mountain and uh i, I was a I, by the way i never asked to go visit this site i'm not the one to go i'm not um <clears throat> i'm not a climber uh i'm a um, the technicians that work for me as an engineer, they want me to stay in the office and tell them what to do. They don't want me to touch anything. And um, so, uh, but uh, I, I was, um, uh, it, it was just necessary for me to be there. So I, I, in November the 9th, 2014, an archeological official and myself were the first Americans to visit the site. I actually, the first one to actually go in and visit what looks like a big ship on the mountain was a woman, an archaeological official. And, um, and the, I, I was too sick when I got to the site to go in. So a woman went in ahead of me. But anyway, that, that was in 2014. And then uh, I, I had no venue to to share this, you know, to, you know, to make the public aware to get support for this. But in late 2014, uh, um, I, um, uh, Dr. Norman Geisler, uh, connected with me and he had never, he, he, he was one of the pioneers in evangelical, po uh, apologetics and he never, he knew all the art claims. And he knew all the theories of the flood. He never supported any of them. In his book on apologetics, his encyclopedias, he would give all the different stories and things. But within days, he immediately both, uh, well, first of all, he, 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 he backed my under, uh, understanding of the flood. He was excited about that. And then I said, listen, there's something else. You know, what? he wanted to know what he could do for me. I said, well, I've actually been to this site on the mountain and I gave him some material. And so he, he became the main defender of this discovery. And he actually coined a new word um, called archipology. 
to, uh, for the defense of this uh, discovery. Uh, and um, I think it was in the fall, October of 2015, he and I were on uh, Fox News with Lauren Green, uh, a, a short episode. Some of you may have seen that. And um, <laughs> he was frustrated that I would not defend this as Noah's Ark, but I'm, I'm working as part of the... Um, the uh, Mount Airy Discovery Foundation, and they don't don't they only they want to uh, uh, at that time I was part of the organization, and they did not want me to to make any claims about it. And I just um, I'm just an investigator, and I report what I what I investigated at that time. But Dr. Geisler, uh, very sadly, this past year he he passed away. So. Maybe on Tangelo, maybe you'll pick up his work in the archaeology and um, <laughs> doing that. But um, the um, uh, it, 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 people are frustrated because the archaeologists work slow. Everything has to be done legally, properly. You have to get uh, uh, archaeological. You got to get government officials. It's, it's very different from art searching, and then. Many things have to have to have to work together to, to be able to do the archaeology. So, uh, and the archaeologists don't want to talk talk about it while they're doing it. So, uh, I, I know everybody's been anxious to hear about this, and it seems like it's almost disappeared. But um, uh, the archaeologists are like <coughs> God working behind the scenes and getting things done. And uh, so we'll 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 continue to wait on them, but things seem to be in high speed right now. So I'm I'm looking forward to to hearing what they what they have to say about this. Yeah, I was very uh, impressed when I saw the video which you linked uh, of your expedition, and I immediately thought, well, this doesn't look like a, 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 a film set or a hoax or so, and. It really didn't take me long to, to, to think, well, there is more on this than just uh, something made up as it was claimed in 2010. And I would suggest we watch one of the two videos on your channel, Philip. So everyone that is watching uh, us and uh, uh, our chat here can have an idea. And I will uh, lower the, the, the sound, the background sound, so you can make your comments about what we see. I think that would be interesting so everyone can understand what we are actually talking about. Okay? So, just a minute. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's me. I'm very sick when I'm looking at that. Um, I don't want to go in. Uh, it's very dangerous uh, because this is buried under the ground, and um, if that rock comes down, it, it, the rope I have around me is not to help me, but so they can find my body. Um, um, There, uh, after the archaeologist has um, official has gone in, now I'm coming in, and when I go in there, I don't know what to think. Um, I'm, I just see this big structure. Um, so this is a huge wooden. So this is a huge wooden wall. What we see here, uh, and yeah, yes, and, it and looked like I was going into a warehouse or something like that, or I, I didn't wall, know what it was. Yeah, and that yeah. wall, it is covered with ice, but behind the ice is just wood, or is it covered with pitch? Uh, well, it's, it's, it's actually got a, a black substance on it. It hasn't been tested yet. And and we're, uh, we're walking down the side of this this portion, um, and um, it, it goes as far as those lights can see. Uh, I wanted to go further, but they're they're stopping me. Because it's very dangerous. Yeah, so this is and, one of the yeah. 
this is one of the side walls which probably uh, yes. would be uh, do you have an idea about the dimension about the size of the, this wall here philip if it's about uh 15 feet high how was he's that in meters about uh five or six meters um and um then the wall on the left that's slanted i think is the first deck yeah, that is. has collapsed under the weight so it just came down like this maybe yeah yeah you know. and and did you this wall here did you see some parts which were not covered with ice and could you see that it was covered with uh, with pitch with black material yeah i have a picture of it when this uh when this particular uh site was opening and you can see the brown internal wood and the black the wall there what's happened the moisture when we open it up the moisture turns into ice so it's gotten more uh, it, it's, it's more difficult to see now every time we go in and one of the reasons why we don't want anybody going into that structure now that's not an archaeologist and not actually doing um, very the careful work to do this because archaeology is a destructive task when you when you when you do an expedition you're doing damage to what you're looking at so we're we're very that's one of the reasons not to bring anybody but archaeologists to this site. This is one of the most impressive uh, pictures here, in my my view. And you see here huge uh, bulks of of wood. And I mean, if someone wants to say that this is a hoax, this is a staged set, then I would ask them, how did they stage this? I mean, that at four thousand one hundred meters or fourteen thousand feet. I mean, who would bring uh, that kind of quantity of wood up to that place and then make a, a tunnel-like structure like this? And uh, I mean, it, this is all very dangerous to be at this place. Yeah. And the, uh, the other thing is, why would you be inviting archaeologists who will be the first ones to, to find out that this is a fabrication? Uh, but these uh, a parachute has tried to get an archaeologist involved from the beginning, and he 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 doesn't really know. He knows that they've always believed it to be Noah's Ark, but he said, "I'm not the archaeologist." So yeah. you know we. Yeah. Uh, of course, he hasn't the expertise to make the tests of the age of the wood, and so forth. Yeah. I mean, I did. Uh, I, I took screenshots of all the video footage of that place, mm -hmm. and I did count more than 150 different uh, big wood structures like this one here. See and the little holes in the end? That it's, it's, there's these little square wooden pegs uh, that hold everything together. There's no metal, everything is put together with um this is a there's actually some some of the pitch are on these cross beams i have a picture of a parachute's hand on 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 this uh, pitch that that i guess when they were putting it on the w walls it some of it dropped onto the inner bracing there there's the there's the the uh um bowed uh outer wall and we're looking down to a lower deck right there there was another yeah, floor beneath us yeah. yeah, this is a very impressive picture here. I will give a stop here. It seems that you are here on a level, but it goes lower down here. And there is probably yeah. a lower level down here. Is that correct? Yes, there's another level, apparently the same size as the level we're on, or very similar, that's below, below the one that we're walking on. So this sidewall is probably at least five meters high in total. Am I correct, Philip? Yeah, yeah. I I, uh, I have to translate the meters. Yeah, but be like five meters, and then that would be each about each floor is like five meters. meters. Yeah. Oh, each floor. So the total would be about forty-five feet. Yes. Yeah. So someone uh, explain to me how was this staged? I mean, this is just a foolish assertion in my understanding I, see i i think some of these are 
cage material, uh, these slats that have fallen down, crashed down when the first top deck caved in. And then the uh, the growth rings on this wood are very unusual because they're they're very evenly spaced. You don't see that in trees now. Um, our seasons, is, you know, you see. This the, is uh, also patterns. very interesting here. These yeah. squares here of the wood. I, I think that was a post for uh, for an animal cage. There you Even see the today, the rings. Even today, Philip, someone on Facebook told me, oh, this, this wood comes from some old castle from the surrounding, and they took the wood from the castle and brought it up to the mountain to, to build this film set and to stage it. What would be your answer to this kind of criticism and skepticism? If you were, if you were trying to uh, fabricate an art, would you make it look like this? Yeah. Yeah. And we, we mean, don't even I hardly mean, know what we're looking at. Yeah, and I mean, we have seen all these, these drawings about how they imagined that they would find the ark, and they all imagined that they would find a complete intact structure. Yeah. And by the way, the wood looks, in some ways, until you look very closely and you see that uh, the chisel marks, but it looks almost like modern timber. But this is the first timber from 4,000 years ago, maybe, that we've ever seen because it's been permanently frozen. It's like founding an animal carcass uh, for the mammoths in Siberia. It's preserved because it's been, fro it's been frozen the whole time. So we've this never seen the type of... Yeah. This is another criticism that they bring up uh, constantly, Philip. They say that wood wouldn't be preserved for so much time. Yeah. Well, uh, neither would an animal carcass uh, last very long unless it's been permanently frozen. But we do know that animal elephants up in Siberia and Alaska have been found almost, <laughs> the woods, almost, you can almost eat them. There was a... a a man found in in your home home country uh, Switzerland back in the 90s uh, frozen and yes, it, it yes, had yes. marvelous technology yeah. yeah but it was in a glacier just like this yeah 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 but it was now you see modified. some of the pitch on that yeah uh -huh. yeah let me go back check that out again Is that the pitch you are talking about? Yes, yes. That one here? Yeah, yeah, that's some of the pitch is, is on there. Uh -huh. And yeah. here, here's one of the, about every uh, 18 inches, there's a square peg that's holding these boards together. Yeah, here. I, I visited our my friend Ken Ham's uh, art building up in uh, Kentucky, and uh, it, it's not so finely fabricated as this. Yeah, the, the, another kind of criticism which I hear is that you can see marks of rotative machines that, that supposedly made these wood box before they, they were brought up to the site. Yeah. Well, it's possible that they they did have machines, uh, but it, more likely they're they're you know saw marks from from the type that they, yeah, actually they have. after that after that criticism came up, Philip, I checked in Genesis and actually the, in Genesis it writes that they had uh, 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 um, things made of, of iron, uh, so I think that. They must have had materials uh, uh, and iron, iron made things to, 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 to fabricate these wooden box and so forth. Yeah, this is the same era as the pyramids. And we know that there were marvelous um, the technology used in the pyramids. Yeah. 
Now they they can watch that video anytime they want to. Um, uh, Garrett yeah, Alton. I will, post and, the, and then, yeah, yeah. I will post the link on, on, on the chat so everyone can uh, uh, have a look at the video. Okay. Very impressive, Philip. This when I saw this the first time, I said, "Wow, that's incredible!" And I cannot imagine that this was a, a, a hoax site and staged by some smart locals to fool uh, rich Chinese people. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, the the Chinese are our friends, but they're not involved right now. It's archaeologists are involved with this now, and uh, uh, the very best. Yeah, and so. I mean, I talked for uh, one hour and a half to Don Patton, and he wasn't able to bring up one uh, uh, empirical proof of all the claims made that this was a stage to walk. So what they had, and all of them to, to which I talked to, were just stories. Yeah. Well, you're referring to Don Patton, who worked with Randall Price, and... Uh, they ha now, what's uh, bear in mind that they they thought they had found the ark up on top of the mountain, and they were very convinced that they had found it. And and this announcement by parachute while they're working there and kind of working together at that time just um, torpedoed that project, which they continued to try to. And um, in fact, after this, after me, you know, they're they're working up on the top of the mountain trying to find something, and parachutes. Thought, well, who knows? You know, this thing was once up there. They may find something. He was concerned. I said, "Don't worry about it." <laughs> you know, they found the rock. They found the top of the mountain <laughs> beneath that ice, and sure yeah, enough, that's yeah, exactly yeah. what they found. But yeah. I, I come from a background of um, uh, where we do underground uh, testing. My brother is one of the world's uh, experts on underground uh, structures. And, you know, when we see some reflections, we've, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, and, and there's no metal in this ship, so you can't use radar to do that. So the way to find out what's there, we've got to um, uh, <laughs> dig through there and, and actually um, find it that way organic materials don't show up on on ground penetrated radar but people that don't have a lot of experience with technology they think it should be very simple to do that but the tech you know there's a lot of arcs been found with technology this is not one this was found by um, um local locals who already knew where it was and and um um people that uh, an archaeologist. And what what impressed me, I saw one uh, video with Parachute where he told uh, a little bit uh, his story of, of uh, the Ark and so forth. Uh -huh. And then it was the first time that I hear that there are actually two sites. It's not just one at uh, 4,100 meters or about 14,000 feet, but there is a yeah. second site at 4,900 uh, 4, meters. I don't yeah. know how many how many feet it is, and when yeah. I hear that, I say I said, well, why would someone set up two film sets at such a high uh, altitude uh, 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 level uh, altitude? I mean, that that would make absolutely no sense. Yeah, well, the natives of the mountain who shared the information with parachute where to look for this, of course. It's difficult to find, even even for parachute, because it, it actually the rocks come down from the mountain and it becomes more deeply deeply buried every year. But according to them, uh, it used to set up on top of the mountain, but it was covered with with snow. You know, it's a snow capped mountain, mm -hmm. and uh, so it was fairly well hidden. Even though I think people were still able to visit it through climbing down. There was a monastery there. Uh, the people that had kind of looked uh, look at St. James uh, Monastery. Uh, and then in 1840, there was a tremendous earthquake. 
and the top of the mountain just slides down it destroys the monastery uh they the the apparently the ark is in a glacier the glacier comes down with the mountain and at that time it breaks into several sections so there's wreckage uh, and uh it's now in and you're right it's in it's in at least two pieces maybe three or maybe more pieces uh and certainly a lot but the archaeologists will be doing the survey and and there's a geologist that will be doing a scatter patterns and 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 uh trying to determine exactly how it is the only way though to fabricate this is you you would have to build something very large it look like a large ship up on top of the mountain and then you would have to push it off <laughs> that that would be the only way that you could fabricate what we're looking at because we're looking at a wreckage and um to, to to fabricate a wreck you've got um uh, surface rot on these timbers so you can't you can't fabricate uh something with rotten timbers or partially rotting you know because you'll see that it should look like new construction the only um newly constructed board that i've ever seen from that mountain was one that don Patton uh <laughs> apparently discovered <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, I could immediately look at it like his geologist did and say that's that definitely that 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 little board was fabricated, and it was light enough I mean, to carry up on the mountain. But the boards we I mean, we got. Philip, are, uh, I mean, Philip, this 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 story is so ridiculous, and I don't know how so many uh, serious institutions actually bought into that story and and uh, uh, endorsed it. And even today, they think that. Uh, this is a hoax. I mean, yeah. Uh, how is there critical logical thinking about uh, this? I mean, well, you know, our, our, our media, um, you know, the, the, they never considered that this is a rival arc searchers that are making these claims, and they refuse to give their sources of where they hear the rumors. And of course, uh, Antangelo, you know, because you've talked to them, uh, they. Um, they don't know where they got their sources you know uh i mean there's all well, types I, of talk and yeah 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 i talk yeah, let's, let's, extensively yeah, yeah i talked well, ex extensively also to uh murad sahin and uh -huh. uh, he supposedly should be one of the guys who best knows what goes on he is also someone that uh, has a company there which makes mountain climbings and he claimed on the phone that he knew where the site is, and uh, he said that uh, uh, the wood was from castles on the surrounding because they had very old, 3,000-year-old castles, and then people there, they went to take the, the wood from these castles and brought it up to the mountain and then built the, the, the site. And then I asked him, but uh, Murat, do you have any proofs, like pictures? when they they staged that set and made it of people bringing up the wood or something i mean you need to have something to back up these stories and he had simply nothing besides just stories they and he said well i also just hear the story from somewhere else from someone else yeah. yeah so there are no proofs they are just uh, stories Antigua, listen here's the real reason why they believed a rival uh, arc searcher who was basing it on anonymous source without checking out anything and and the media went with that sources the, the, the real reason is people do not believe in the possibility of noah's ark being on that mountain yeah, yeah yeah if they even believe the possibility that there was a noah's ark and and uh, i'm i'm I, ha I have to say you know this was so sensational uh, that if the archaeologist was impressed, I wonder why weren't the uh, evangelical or creationist ministries impressed with this? And uh, and many people. Let's 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 be. Uh, let let me express my appreciation. There were people like yourself that heard that was just really excited about this, and yes. um, I, I mean all over the world, uh, uh, you know, uh, that that wanted this to be the case. But people don't realize how much work is required in in archaeology and getting things done properly, how much expense is involved, and and all the the difficulties of 
of doing this type of project, but but um, <laughs> I, I have to go back to say the real reason people do not believe they they believe in science, but what they know about science is is about what we've learned that happens with the virus or you know, yeah, many, it's, many, it's what's, I, yeah. I see many, many critics say, well, uh, another one, or, well, they did find so many arcs in the past, that's just one more. What would uh -huh. you say to these critics? Why well, is this one different than all the others that supposedly uh, have been found? Well, well, for one thing, I can tell you, this is, sh this is shut down the arc claims. No, no art searcher wants to compete with this uh, discovery. Uh, yeah, that used to be the case, and and uh, you know, and I, st I still hear of claims being made, you know, from, but they're from the past. And uh, there's only one art story right now, and this is it. And so everybody is waiting for this to flush out. Uh, you know, it's it's put everything on hold to um, to uh, for this one is. Um, has been uh, investigated and uh, so so it's 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 not the archaeologists knew immediately that this was not another art claim and by the way some of these claims have been valid uh, i've checked my uh uh ed davis the american soldier that was there in 2000 and i mean in 1943 during the war mm -hmm. and he saw the same thing i saw uh and so you know, he, he you was spoke definitely. To him? You spoke, you no, spoke I, to him? I haven't talked to him, but I've, he's he's passed away. He's been passed away. But his his I know he went where I went, and he was with the same people that I was with. And take you don't see that you don't you don't see this unless the uh, local people allow you to see this. Mm -hmm. And then uh, perhaps Navarro, the Frenchman. Uh, was actually at this site. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, it looks like he, when I see the videos, um, but, um, and I'm not sure that he wanted the other people to know where he, where he, where he, where he got his, uh, where he actually made the site. Yeah, I'm a little bit skeptic about Navarra's uh, uh, finding. I think I showed you a science paper which uh, made the radiocarbon dating of the wood that he did find there. And yeah. it seems the, the dating didn't match. Well, that, yeah, that's, that's possible, though. Uh, in radiocarbon dating, there's, there's, you know, we need world-class um, uh, uh, radiocarbon dating and venture chronologists because there's, uh, there's, there's materials from all er eras, so, um, you know, not just, you know, um, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm basing my dating on the pottery, which I have more confidence in, but we're going to, you know, there will be the top uh, 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 scientific dating people in the world are working on this. So they did find po uh, pottery. Would you like to talk something about this? Uh, about the pottery? Well, they, certainly that's, that's what, um, uh, even before this discovery, I had this. Um, um, I, I I was tracing this pottery. Um, uh, uh, let me see if, yeah, this pottery and and then they're like tent platforms, and I know that this this was Noah's family that that had deposited this, and and uh, it appears that this is matching. This is this is spreading out and going down into Israel. It's called Kirbit Kurak. It's if, and we've got one of the authorities on the Kirbit Kurak that are working on this project. Uh, and and it and it spreads out. The only way that could happen is there's a new something new is happening in the in the ancient Near East, and uh, and it, there appears to be pottery in the this structure. We call it the ancient wood structure. We don't call it Noah's Ark that um that matches this and then there's a there's another type of pottery that goes down into um to to iraq where babylon was and and 
some of that also seems to match. It's that's called the bevel rim uh, uh, types. So, um, the, in fact, it's these migration. Even if the archaeologists and everybody said this was a ship, it's up on the mountain, and and it looks like Noah's Ark, it smells like Noah's Ark. That would not <laughs> prove that it was Noah's Ark. <laughs> uh, it would be a, it would just be some yeah, sort of an app apparition. <laughs> What yeah, Norman is, Geisler said this, wasn't it? Norman yeah, yeah. Geisler said this, wasn't it? He said, uh, as you said now, if it uh, looks like Noah's Ark, if it smells like Noah's Ark, then it probably is Noah's Ark. <laughs> right, right. But, but the way you prove that it's Noah's Ark is you show that the existing population of the world came from this mountain. And that's, that's the work that I'm doing. And I'm, and I'm working with the archaeologists, not just on this structure, but they're excited about these migration paths. This will, this will overturn the current paradigm uh, in which um, prehistoric and early historic archaeology is working in. And I mean, uh, so the archaeologists are, are also excited about that, you know, uh, seeing uh, the prehistoric uh, sites might not be religious burials as everybody been been talking about. They may have been uh, burials that happened in one year. Uh, and that and that's that, of course, is the wor work that I do. So, so you you know we're we're on an archaeological um, uh, project, uh, not a Noah's Ark project, but uh, you know you you can never prove anything historically, but probably there's never there might be nothing from ancient history that will be so well established as this. Yeah, Philip, uh, one uh, issue that always comes up by skeptics in regards of Noah's Ark is the, the migration of the animals. How did penguins uh, arrive in Antarctica? How did kangaroos arrive in Australia and so forth? Uh, how, do you, how would you explain this? Well, wh whether you believe in the Ark or not, or Noah's Flood or not, there's definitely a fact that the fauna, the animals, on every continent drastically changed from what is now understood as the Ice Age, which I understand as the Flood. And, uh, and the, the Flood has been stretched out uh, over many years to, to try to get a mechanistic explanation. But so there were there even in Australia there was a change in the fauna. There was megafauna. Uh, there was there's they look very similar. But then there's also been change. For example, uh, during this time about five thousand years ago, there were camels and horses in 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 America. But there weren't camels and horses in the old world. <laughs> now it was just a reverse when when uh, you know uh, it, it, when the historical times. So, so there's been a big change in the fauna everywhere. Now, how did they, how did they get there? Um, uh, well, one of the things that I realized, uh, you know, uh, when I realized how much stuff would be floating, and I said, that should be, there should be floating islands. And then as I did a little research, sure enough, historically recorded floating islands, for example, off the coast of Africa. And the hurricanes take these, these to South America. And it's very interesting. All the animals in South America are climbers, monkeys, snakes, llamas. And that's the type that uh, would, would uh, have, you know, migrated to these, these islands. And then, um, uh, and in fact, even in modern times, there's been animals that hurricanes have carried iguanas, big and large animals sometimes. Uh, but at that time, there was probably, uh, the earth was probably, you know, quite a bit different. And, and actually, there's not that much water to cross. And, and, and if the, um, you know, the oceans weren't, as, uh, is my understanding, in my research is the water, th there was a different, two different types of, um, of uh, um, aquatic patterns, you know, for the weather before this time and after this time. And so this, 
uh, you know, a lot that's now been explained by plate tectonics, I think, is explained by this excess water going and deepening the oceans, stretching them, and um, then, you know, I, we don't know what kind of land bridges may have been then, you know, but there's so much that we don't know, and there's so many possibilities. But we have to understand that this could not have been a natural occurrence. Um, if there was a flood, there was no way to survive it. If there was a flood, like in the, unless, unless someone who, who maybe made those animals was actually uh, orchestrating and, and, and looking after them. In fact, I think he still looks after the sparrows and the, and the animals. So yeah, yeah, it's, it, yeah. The, the issue of geology, uh, geolo geological uh, movement of the plate tectonics and so forth. I have very little understanding on this, but I think it would be very interesting to have a talk to with someone that uh, uh, makes studies on this and could explain uh, 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 compelling models, how everything happened during the flood and afterwards, and uh, how uh, uh, it became that the continents are distributed to the way they are now. And they say that previously there was just one supercontinent like Pangea, and then we split up and formed our current continents. But it would be such a fast moving apart, and that would be something very uncompelling. I mean, these are all questions which I really have no explanation, but there are. Uh, people that study this and uh, through creation science and so forth, I would really like to understand more about these issues. Yeah, yeah. I, I most of the geologists that I work with are standard, uh, are main, main. You know, uh, they're not uh, create uh, uh, younger creationists. But mm -hmm. the, so I've had many discussions, and basically I, I talk about what a fine video game they created in this uh, plate tectonics. But but there's there's a lot of actually uh, problems with the with the concept. Uh, but it was created to try to explain the phenomena that we see that can get, can better be explained by the flood about forty five hundred mm -hmm. years ago. So just for for the the, the people that are, are assisting us. You basically believe that the earth, uh, that the flood happened about four, four thousand five hundred years ago. That's yeah, right? um, um, exactly on the biblical date. Uh, it, it's it's amazing how close my radiocarbon dating checks uh, correspond to Archbishop Usher's dating of the flood. Within a few decades, at the most, uh, we're talking about around forty three hundred fifty years ago. Of um, about forty three hundred years ago, but we're we're going to have these archaeologists. I mean, uh, uh, dendrochronologists they call them uh, experts at tree uh, tree mm -hmm. rings and radiocarbon yeah. datings, and 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 that and that might give us some better. And then there were, th you know, so many things happened uh, uh, that th the operations in the earth have not been the same over even over the period of human history. Uh, for example, there used to be rivers in the desert and advanced civilization in deserts. And there were hippopotamus and, and elephants up in northern Europe and Siberia. And, uh, and then they just disappear. So, so something has changed in the uh, ecology of the earth and, uh, you know, within human history. Yeah, I saw a science paper, I think it was from Nature magazine or so, where they did uh, find very rich fauna uh, and at uh, Antarctica. So uh, probably uh, before the flood, uh, Antarctica was a very rich ecosystem uh, 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 with uh, much uh, fauna and flora, I guess. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Antejala, let me mention, I it seems that the continents were roughly like they are now, but the continental shells were pulled down. For example, in the Gulf of Mexico and off the coast of Florida, South China Street, Mediterranean, there are civilizations that are buried just right off the coast. And I assume it was this excess water pulling the ocean uh, continental shells down to where they are now. 
and uh, that you know that 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 caused the caused these civilizations to to get buried. And yeah, I yeah. I studied this after our interaction, and I've actually not seen many many. Uh, civilizations uh, under the, the the water, like at the Black Sea, and I think in Japan there is one in Mexico, but not much really. No, there, there's quite a bit all through the Mediterranean. You know, the Black Sea, the you know, like you said, the South China uh, and you know, we've really not explored. They recently they found a lot more of this, but I, I'm not. You know, um, we're just talking about maybe. 50 miles of coastline that all of a sudden went underwater mm -hmm. and, and but we really don't know what the coastlines were before or after but i think we'll be able to determine it under the new paradigm that i'm working under yeah i think uh, one very important issue to to bring clarification in regards of this finding is really the the dating of the materials of the wood uh, of pottery and I think once that the results are public and peer-reviewed then uh, and they confirm the age of that wood then I think that the perception on the general public of this finding will will uh, dramatically change what do you think uh, I, I think the very um, announcement that this is being explored is almost uh, world changing. Yeah, I hope so. I really would <laughs> like to see that uh, uh, the, the evangelicals and the, the Christians and believers also the Jews that they would, after that uh, announcement, uh, uh, recognize that this is really uh, Noah's Ark. Yeah. You know, the, the good thing on this project, we've got uh, Christians working on it, of course. Parachute, by the way, even though he lives in a, a Muslim country, he's a he's he's known in that area as the, as the big Christian uh, father parachute, Baba parachute. But but of course uh, we we've got Muslim friends helping us. We've got Jewish scientists working on. So so um, this is a um, something that concerns all mankind uh, because yeah. this this is where. We all we were all once on the same boat. Uh, if uh, if this checks out, and that should really do a lot to bring people together. Yeah, and, not only that. I think it will also uh, change uh, uh, the, the the way how many think in regards of the age of the earth. Because today, still, I'm a young earth creationist. We are ridiculed uh, on a daily basis when we talk that uh, to others that uh, we believe that the, uh, the earth is young. But I think Noah's flood is a flood is a, a very powerful uh, yeah. evidence that uh, the, yeah. what the Genesis says is true. Yeah. Uh, to explain to most everyone, um, my archaeological work, I discovered uh, some of these civilizations buried by the flood were under Ice Age uh, burials. And that clued me in to start considering um, uh, the Ice Age possibly being actually being the flood. And in fact, the uh, the um, geological layers that are now given as evidence of the Ice Age were originally thought to be only way you could explain them was to be a flood, and it was called the Diluvian. And the scientific papers, like the oldest scientific journal in America, the American Scientific Journal. They it was founded on this diluvian science that this what we're what's now called the ice age was actually a worldwide flood. And um, when uh, my friend Ken Ham was opening his ark encounter um, in Kentucky, and Norm Geisler and I went to visit him, he we it, you know it was a he was really glad to see us coming up, you know, for that. And the first thing Norm says, says, Ken, um. Philip and I believe that the Ice Age was the flood, and but we had a, we had a good time. So you know, there's different. Uh, it, we have a different scientific theories, but we both believe uh, that the scriptures are giving us the real account, and and if we use those as a light, 
that's how I did. I, I actually said, okay, I, I didn't know whether there was a flood because I had been trained in science and, 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 um, and I knew what the, what the teachings about ancient men were. And, but then I, I knew that Jesus Christ was real. And <laughs> I didn't know how to handle this product. And a lot of other Christians are the same way. You know, they have reasons for believing but then they can't understand, well, why, why is, you know, Jesus talked about Noah's flood. So I, you know, when I retired from my company, I said, I got to find out what the answer is. And so I, I first of all, I, I went into a scientific methodology. I said, okay, if there were a flood uh, 4,500 years ago, I should find the, I should find a disappearance of people suddenly sudden disappearance about 45 minutes. I should find, I should find a new dispersion of people uh, uh, c coming out from the ancient Near East, and, and I should find um, th th it should be a very different material culture, the, the new one from the old one. There shouldn't be continuity. There should be no continuity of scripts. And you know, I believe what I was taught about Egyptian civilization. You know, that had been continuous for in these cities like Jericho where it had been continuous for 12,000 years. And I found the very evidence they were given to say they were continuous showed pure evidence that they were not continuous. For example, Jericho was destroyed in the early Bronze Age. And between that and in the next layer, there's a there's a erosion and flood seal. So I found so that none the of these things... Huh? That's fascinating. Yes. So you think that Jericho was existing prior to the flood? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Jericho was a, you know, it was very violent before the flood. So in all these uh, ancient prehistoric civilizations, there's evidence of violence everywhere. And, uh, you know, uh, you don't need to take my word. Just Google up uh, Bronze Age violence or Neolithic violence. And you'll see the archaeologists find this violence everywhere. And then they find these graves everywhere and they try to explain it, but they can't find where the people that lived in these graves lived. <laughs> they only find graves. Uh, but it's very clearly that these ancient civilizations were brought to an end by the flood. Wow. That's exactly one year. Wow. Wow. That's fascinating. I didn't know it, about it, that. The, ar <laughs> the archaeologists are fascinated about that. When they start now, when they start looking at these prehistoric graves, they can't get it out of their mind. So this is going to change the way uh, archaeologists look at ancient uh, grave sites. And once once you get this in your a matter, it just becomes so obvious that that you're not you're looking at the people there. And from these sites, a lot of them they're they're lying in a kind of curved flex position. And, you know, I was wondering about that, and I've got a book on forensic, uh, archaeo forensics, really. How do you, if you find somebody, how do you know if somebody drowned? Well, when people are drowning, their torsos is, goes low, and their hands and legs, their appendages are extended as they come down. So they'll, they come down in a kind of curved, flex position. So the ar archaeologists have been trying to give a religious explanation to why they're they're uh, laying all, in all these all over the world, by the way, and they're and they're and they're there with their houses, with their with their uh, food, with their weapons, uh, and um, so who's building all these graves? Because we can't find any evidence of settlements. It, all we find is graves from these prehistoric sites. So, you know, I'm 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 fairly, I'm certain that they. Well, almost, uh, I'm almost positive that they all uh, were put to an end by the flood. Some of them were, were covered up and they made Indian mounds. And there's these mounds all over the earth with these people in them. Why would people go to all that expense of building these elaborate graves? Uh, uh, you know, and, you know, if, if you spend all your GNP on building graves, you know, you cannot survive. Yeah. Yeah, that's very fascinating. I don't know 
uh, uh, about this, uh, Philip. I have not studied it, but um, I think that is a very interesting line of uh, evidence, which I would like to dig deeper and uh, uh, and see what I can find out about this. And maybe this is one line of evidence that backs up the flood as well. Yeah, uh, but uh, let me say the the project on Mount Ararat with this ship up there, it comes out of the archaeological project. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that that will be fantastic when uh, when they will uh, publish the results and if the results really confirm the age of the structure up there, then all these uh, hoax claims I think they will uh, 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 not completely vanish, but uh, ninety five percent they will have nothing to say anymore. Yeah, yeah, you know, of course, there's going to be people that. Uh, that will have uh, something negative to say about this regardless but right now yeah, it's it, there's no there's there's no reason even to be talking about this because the uh, you know the the work is getting done and and you know if you start accusing these archaeologists of being involved in a fraud you know the government officials um you know then what do you believe you know um um you, you know, the, a conspiracy to make something like this happen. Yeah, there's people that yeah. will, that will, there's people that make conspiracies about how Jesus was, uh, body oh. was stolen from the grave, you know, and they yeah. still yeah. go on to this day. So that's going to go on, but the world's yeah, going to yeah. go on yeah. with truth. Yeah, yeah, of course. There will always be naysayers and deniers and, who ridicules that will not stop, but um, I think uh, what you're doing is, is uh, very important in my understanding, and um, I want to learn more about this whole thing to understand more about the origins. Well, thank you, uh, and I, I guess that sort of concludes our discussion here. If I don't know if any questions though. Uh, come in it's, it's probably so much to think about you don't know what to ask yeah i i think for our first conversation philip i would say that maybe uh the audience can prepare some questions for eventually if we can uh, put up uh, another uh chat on my channel uh maybe next friday or when you feel uh, uh motivated to do it uh, i think for 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 me, it is uh, very enlightening to listen to you, to, to, to learn from you, from your experience and from, from your views. And um, I am absolutely convinced that this is not just one of many arcs which have been announced in the past. I think this is something very unique, special, and it really deserves to be investigated archaeologically. And I'm really... Uh, uh, curious to see what the results will be of these forthcoming expeditions yeah yeah and, and, and everybody is you know what what the archaeologists now they they i'll be honest with you they really do think this is they know it's ancient and they think it might be a pilgrimage site because that's believing it, it's very difficult to you know the current scientific paradigm does not allow for such a flood but they also are excited that it might be more than that so yeah, uh, yeah but they yeah. but they they the, at least they have an open mind we've got some great archaeologists working on this but that's, you that's know the, the evidence is point yeah yeah no it is wonderful that it is not not just an arc searcher without any uh, scientific expertise or knowledge it seems that these are highly qualified uh, uh, specialists in their fields and uh, I mean, what they will announce will certainly uh, uh, be mo much more respected uh, by uh, everyone. Right, right. And right. Uh, that's all we have now is if people want the science and they want the credentialed scientists, that's, all, uh, that's really all we have, except for those of us who have faith. And, and, um, and, and it looks like it looks like the ark. It's the size of the ark. It's the age of the ark, and it has and it passed the smell test. <laughs> uh, 
yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what is it? It's, it's a duck. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's yeah, something no, that, that can swim. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's funny. I hear that uh, it smells bad at the lowest floor because they, the, the, the animals they pooed and <laughs> it went down uh, to the lowest floor. Yeah, no, no, no kidding. So the explorers, when they first went into some of these rooms, they 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 ended up in the hospital. There's terrible odors that come from some of these rooms. <laughs> yeah, that is one other kind of criticism. They say, how is it possible that the organic material remains uh, preserved in the in, 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 <laughs> up to the point to smell bad still today? I mean. Uh, yeah. That, that seems really incredible, you know. Uh, archaeologists and scientists found what what do they call them? Uh, the feces from ancient animals. They're found all the time, in but they don't <laughs> normally find them frozen, fresh, fro uh, fresh frozen. Uh, so, um, it, well, you know, all types of um, uh, genetic tests. You can imagine there may be in the soil around this. Uh, there may be antlers and feathers. Uh, it probably suitable for for some DNA checking, and so this yeah, could revolutionize think, more than archaeology. It could revolutionize biology. Yeah, I I saw some pictures from Joel Clank where he shows some skeletons from animals. I don't I don't know if it's horses or something. I'm not sure if it's effectively from the site which you visited, but it it would have to it, be expected yeah. really. And yeah. if they He's find a zoo archaeologist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then if they find skeletons uh, in the at the site, then they can also uh, radiocarbon it and, and check how old sure. these skeletons are. And that would be yeah. another line of evidence. Okay, Philip, uh, we are one hour and ten minutes. Uh, we talked uh, previously; we would stay about an hour online. I don't think that uh, we will do a question and answer section at our first meeting. We will eventually do it at the next time. And uh, the audience can prepare some a questions and then uh, uh, bring them up. And we will do a question and answer section at our next video. And uh, I would like to um, finish our chat and give you the last word. Well, uh, I, I just want the people that are listening to this tonight to, um, to, to be part of the team. Um, and and uh, uh, it, it's it's like a family that's kind of developed around this, and and we get to know one another, and everybody's different, uh, but there's uh, I, I know there's some people watching tonight that's been supporting this project for many years. Um, uh, I'll just mention one: Mike Newsling up in uh, Columbia, uh, Columbus, Ohio. Um, uh, uh, Douglas Ferguson in um, in, in, in uh, St. Petersburg, Florida, uh, and um, and uh, you know we've got uh, friends in Poland, friends in Dominican Republic, many that's just hoping that they would see the results of this coming out, so uh, they can be encouraged that things are moving along. But we haven't had anybody yeah. to do what Ontangelo is doing and and grab and and keep keep everybody informed about what's going on. So thank you, Antangela, for... Yes, for, yes. I uh, just... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just yeah. putting the link on, on, on my virtual library on the, on the chat, so anyone that wants can uh, have a look and, uh, and see what I have collected in regards of uh, material, in regards of this finding, and uh, it is already considerable material, many pictures, and I think it will be very interesting for who still has not uh, have a look to have a look at uh, my, my link at my, my library and inform uh, about uh, everything that we are talked about tonight. Yeah. So, Philip, I, yeah. I just want one more thing. Um, when we first saw the evidence of this, there was nothing slick or, you know, highly produced. It was, it was just real people. And, and this is a little podcast that you're starting and, uh, uh, and, and, and growing with it. So, uh, we will try to, uh, make things convenient for everybody to get information and to ask questions. And, uh, then the, 
to learn more about what could possibly be one of the last things Norm Geisler said this, this is potentially world changing. And if you ponder that, you might understand why, how this could be. I, I know it is changing of the scientific paradigm. Yeah, but it can I change more than that. For me, this has been a great discovery. It has been really a blessing for me to meet you, Philip, and to provide all this information. You have been uh, always, always uh, uh, very open to, to share all the information that you have with me and with anyone that is asking you. And I am very grateful for that. And I really hope that uh, uh, this uh, can, uh, this information flow that we started, that it can be uh, reaching many more people and solidify the faith that we have uh, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, which is so much under attack through science and through skeptics, which ridicule us and ridicule the timeline and so forth. And I think this kind of evidence just uh, 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 is so powerful. And I think it is very important that it comes out to the world and that anyone can know it. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much, Philip. Uh, see you next time. I hope we can set up another, another meeting or next Friday or in 14 days, whatever uh, is fine with you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone that has watched uh, this live stream and see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.